We are Mike and Taylor, and these are our dogs, Penny and Lucy. Four years ago, we sold our home and everything we owned, moved onto a 40-foot boat, and sailed from Seattle. This is the story of us making our way. Welcome back, friends. We have transited the Panama Canal and are now in the Caribbean, but just barely. We pulled into a slip in Shelter Bay Marina and we've been hunkered down here for a while now. Central America's rainy season is still in full swing, but it's much easier to handle in a marina than out at sea. But just beyond those breakwaters, there's a whole new ocean and a whole new chapter awaiting us. The question is, when will we be able to venture out? Hello, my friends. <laughs> it feels like ages since I've done this and spoken to the camera. We are in Shelter Bay Marina. We transited the Panama Canal, we pulled into our slip, and we have not moved from this slip for um, over a month, like a month, maybe a month and a half. It's been, we've been here for a little bit. So part of what has kept us in this slip for so long is that we flew back to the States for two weeks, which was amazing. It ended up being a little bit longer than two weeks, just traveling and getting back here. And uh, we got to go visit my parents, and then we got to go to the Annapolis Boat Show. And we met a bunch of you guys there. It was so much fun. And yeah, I don't know, we, really, we had a lot of fun at the boat show. However, like the last couple of days, something was going around and everybody got super super sick including me so as soon as we got back to the boat that first week was like just a total bust i was miserably sick and recovering and then the second week we started to kind of like you know take care of projects and get ready to go and since then we've sort of been in a holding pattern because as soon as we were about ready to pull out of this marina uh there's been kind of two things that have been keeping us stuck more on that later but before we can get out into the Atlantic Ocean, Via is due for a much needed upgrade. Today is a very exciting day aboard Via. We're getting a huge upgrade. Uh, as you guys probably know, we've been limping along our mainsail for a better part of a year now. It's original to the boat, so it's like almost 20 years old and it's been uh, it's just getting old, it's been ripping, um, it's really lost its shape. And so I reached out to the folks at Southeast Asia Sales uh, and we have a new mainsail finally. And uh, today uh, it's all ready to go and, and ready to hoist. So I'm super excited about this. And I think it's uh, come at a really important time because you know we're in Panama now and we're gonna be heading east and probably north which means upwind and up current and so having an efficient mainsail i think is going to make a big difference in how via sails i'm really excited to see kind of what the difference is but here it is there's the old one so i'm a little nervous that the sail might have some fit issues because we were in a remote area, had no good place to like take our, our existing sail down and lay it out on the ground and, and measure it. So I had to do all the measurements with, you know, the sail like still on the boat, like everything standing. And I had to, we had to make some modifications as we got the sail because my measurements weren't perfect. I think it's gonna work, but I'm, I'm still a little bit nervous that, that maybe I screwed it up. And uh, it's time to hoist her up and, and hope everything fits. Let's see how it see how it looks. All right, so this is one of the things that I had to sort of modify. When I got the sail, <clears throat> pretty quickly realized that it was like ever so slightly larger than the old sail. 
and that led to a problem where our battens of which we have four were a little too short and here in Panama there's a little sail loft here in the marina and he said like getting new battens is not easy and they're only like a few inches short so I came back sort of frustrated and Taylor Taylor said something which gave me an idea and so I made these little batten extenders. So I took a little piece of starboard, cut it to size, kind of routed out a little slot. And this is how it works. It just slides right over the end of the bat. Gives us that last little extra few inches that we need. So hopefully it works. Here's the batten. Okay, check it out. I think it looks really good. I got the mainsail up. I got all three reef points put in. Check it out. Beautiful. We got one, two is uh, on the other side and then that's the new third reef. Looks good, the shape is so much better. So we made a couple of changes. One is we moved to a loose foot uh, and I think that's gonna help give us a little bit better sail shape. Those battens look really good. I gotta maybe adjust some tension on them. And then a couple of changes in our reef points. And this is one of the things that we, we changed. So this came at the recommendation of uh, Robert Tasker with Southeast Asia Sales. So he recommended maybe these, um, I wanna do low friction rings was one thing. So that's here. So it used to be that the reef line would run up through the cringle, kind of through the sail and back down the other side. But by running through that cringle and back down the other side, I think sometimes it would cause um, uh, material to pinch. And I think this low friction ring not only reduces some friction because it's a little smoother and uh, wider diameter than a Kringle, but since it keeps the reef line all on one side, I think that'll maybe help us avoid that situation where we get the material caught in the reef line, which is what led to a couple tears on the old sail. Uh, but then we also added these what are called dog bones that came at the recommendation of Southeast Asia Sails. So here's my reef line. And same idea is that kind of helps keep material from bunching up and getting caught in the reef line. Seems to work pretty good. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see how she sails. And so I think all the above is going to be much improved. And it won't rip all the time. So, <laughs> oh, I'm psyched. Thank you, Southeast Asia Sails. It looks beautiful. I'm super happy. Taylor, huh. we have a new mainsail. Yeah? It's all set up. Oh my god, Tos. Yeah. You did it. Excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Reef? Yep. All three reefs work. And uh, yeah, we're going to be able to like seriously reduce the size of the sail. That's good. And in these stormy. I think also, parts. since the old sail was so baggy, we can never get it flat. Yeah. And so I think we'll actually be able to sail. Well, I think we'll be able to sail better upwind, but even just like reducing roll downwind, if you can really like flatten the Aha. sail, you know, it doesn't like pop back and forth as hard. This is good for my barfing. Yeah, now that we're in a place where we're going to sail nothing but upwind for the next, <laughs> <laughs> for the next six months. Wow, but, Mike, that's huge. Yeah, it's like. Shelter Bay Marina, which is the big marina that's on the Caribbean side, just outside of the canal. And it's sort of the middle of the country. And so we have two awesome cruising grounds, one to the west and one to the east, from where we are. 
And we originally wanted to go to the one to the west. We wanted to go up to Bocas del Toro. It looks beautiful. We have, most of our friends are up there right now. <laughs> you know, we really wanted to get up there. But there's been this sort of bizarre weather pattern that's been creating a bunch of westerlies, meaning that we would just be kind of going right into the wind for, you know, a 24 hour sail or whatever it is, which isn't ideal. And the westerlies have also come with something that looks like it might be a tropical depression forming here, like today or tomorrow. So we have just been eyeing this for the last couple weeks, watching this weird weather pattern develop. Um, in any case, it's keeping us from going west. But we can't go east out to the San Blas Islands either, because for the last two weeks, there have been protests all across the country of Panama. There is a, a mine contract that the government signed that has a lot of the country really angry. And the protests have been really disruptive, like they've blocked main roads all over the place. And what this has meant is that there's been fuel shortages and food shortages in most of the country for the last two weeks. Because like farmers can't get in to deliver their goods, like stores are not getting stocked, like restaurants are closed, like nobody can get anything. And the marina just started running shuttles into town here to go to the store just like maybe three days ago. And so we were on, like they, they're supposed to run daily, but they've been stopped because of the protests. So we got on the first shuttle to go in and see if the store had anything. And the produce section was like empty shelves. They're still, are not able to get stocked. Um, and the reason this is a problem is because the San Blas Islands are extremely remote. And so we can't leave the dock until we have a totally full fridge and a totally full pantry because we're going out into the remote islands and they're having really bad food shortages there too like the locals they can't get any food for the same reasons that it's challenging here so anyway <laughs> we can't go left because of weather and we can't go right because of these protests and the food shortages and not being able to provision and so that has meant that for the last several weeks we have just been sitting here in the marina hanging out and doing marina shit <laughs> anyway, Mike this morning went in to try the grocery store again to see if anything, any more produce got delivered and he came back with a few things, which is great news. So we're starting to finally like, I don't know, formulate a plan on getting out of here. Still don't know when it might be, it might still be several more days, but hopefully bit by bit we're getting there. While we waited for our moment to make our escape, we watched some pretty impressive storms roll through from the relative safety of our slip, including this one that started with this thunderhead and ended with this massive water spout that formed just outside our marina. Between the storms, the heat here kept us inside in the AC most of the time, and though we weren't sure exactly when we'd be leaving, we began to get Via ready to roll anyway so that when the window appeared, we could take it. Today is the day that we leave the marina, yeah! I know, I'm pretty sure that I am wearing the same outfit as the other day when I was talking to you guys, but Trust me, it is another day. It is several days later, and um, we're going. And I'm really, really, really excited. So the protests are still going on. There's still some shortages of some food, but it's not as bad as it once was. And we've been able, like over several trips into town, been able to just like hodgepodge some, <laughs> some produce together. And we're just gonna hope it's enough. And we're gonna hope that we're gonna be able to get something out at San Blas, because that is where we are going. We are breaking the trip to San Blas up in two, two jumps. We could do it in one day, but we're breaking it up into two jumps. So we're not gonna be arriving at San Blas today, but we will in just a couple days or so. I'm very, very excited about that. And this is our first, like we're going out into the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, <laughs> first time. First time. First time in a new ocean. <laughs> yeah. Are cool. you ready? I can't wait either. Look at that. All that excitement. Also, do you like our high-tech window shades? They keep the morning sun from just like
coming right in here and baking this whole house. So just about everything is ready. We took down our <laughs> Oregon Trail top. Um, Oregon. Oregon. It's weird because when I lived in Washington, you say it Oregon, but I feel like when you're in school, you learn at the Oregon Trail. When you're in school in New York, you say When you're Oregon. in school in New York, yeah, all the East Coasters call it the Oregon Trail. And then when you're on the West Coast, you're like, it's Oregon. Anyway, we took the cover down and we've been stowing things and stashing things and transforming this from a house to a sailboat. And I think we're about there. I think the only thing we need to do is get off power and unplug the beloved AC. We're really enjoying this time in the AC, but alas, back to the sweating. We're off, it's not embarrassing. <laughs> it's luxurious, we're living a life of luxury. We have this air conditioner we bought, we're enjoying it. And um, yeah, it's been nice at the dock, but it's time to go. Approaching the breakwater and officially entering the Atlantic Ocean, y'all! A little after two years after making the big left turn out of Seattle, here we were officially in the Atlantic Ocean. Ooh, swell. It's been a while. that we can get our anchor down before these afternoon storms come in. I'm really tired of these squalls, <laughs> tell you what. <laughs> the month we're in right now though is both the thick of rainy season and the end of rainy season. So there's sort of a grand finale with, uh, with the storm, stormy season. So it's both, I guess, you know, the worst that it gets, but also like its days are numbered. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can just get to San Blas without getting struck by lightning <laughs> or struck in a squall. Oh my god, knock on everything. And um, yeah, so think the thoughts. <laughs> Because 
We've had the sail on the boat for months, like three months, I think. And we've just been carrying it around. We haven't been able to actually like make the switch because we needed it to be, we needed to get to the sail loft. We just needed like a couple tweaks done to it. And so we've just been like carrying it around and uh, there it is. Two months to the day, exactly, since we set the anchor. I feel a little, a little rusty, but I think we did it. So we're just gonna hang out here for a night or two until we get some updates from our friends, and um, then next stop is San Blas Island. It had been two months since the last time we were on anchor, but it had been eight months since we were on anchor and saw this, other cruising boats. After moving through much of Central America without ever seeing another sailboat save for the couple that we knew, this was a welcome sight and one that got us even more excited for the amazing cruising grounds that lay ahead, the San Blas Archipelago. Be sure to join us next time we made it to the sand Lost Island. We kick off a brand new season and a brand new chapter in one of the most beautiful places on earth. But it gets off to a little bit of a rough start. I don't know, I hope this is it because otherwise we have to go back to Shelter Bay Marina. In six more hands. All right, so can't see this. There's a breeze, and so it's pulling the sail away from me, and can't hold the camera and the sail and manipulate anything. But here's the baton. God damn it. Whatever. <laughs> 